It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game on Zoom. Yes, indeed, today we have Allen Wood versus Sylvania Woods. And, you know, we have changed a lot of things to accommodate this COVID crisis. Uh, our students are safe at home. I'm here in the TV studio, and uh, we have no buzzers, so the competition is different. Each team will get 18 questions, different questions of comparable value, and the team that is ahead at the end will come back to play our game again and perhaps advance to the semifinals, maybe win the county championship. It's always possible. Something we haven't changed, the categories that we have used for the past 34 years, and if you don't know them, here are our six categories of questions. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, we start our teams out with 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. No penalties for incorrect answers. And we're now about to start. Let's look at the team, first of all, from Allenwood. And let's say hello, Amanda. Could you wave to everybody, please? Amanda is our captain. And we have Anderson. Anderson waved to everybody. He's looking confident, too. I like his smile. And Drake, he's looking real professional there. Look at that nice mic and that headset he's got. These guys mean business today. All right, they've got a great coach. They've got a great principal and three great students. Let's have a great game. All right, Alan Wood, here we go. Here are your green things questions for five points. If you read Dr. Seuss, you'll know this one. Dr. Seuss is Lorax, L-O-R-A-X, spoke out against deforestation, the cutting down of things, since these green things have no tongues of their own. I think that it's trees. Say it again, Amanda. Trees. Trees is right. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. Yeah, he was a great environmentalist, Lorax. Good start. Got yourself five points. Here's the 15-point question. A STEM activity that you can try at a museum in California lets you turn this most common of oceanic plants that can be green, red, or even brown, turn them into yarn. What oceanic plants are we talking about? Um, I feel like it's either seaweed. But I think it's seaweed. Okay, I hear Drake say something. Anderson, gentlemen, any ideas? Um, um, probably. All right, Amanda, what's your final answer? I think we're going to go with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is certainly inside of them, but the plants themselves are algae. Algae. There's brown algae, kelp. There's red algae. There's, brown, there's green algae. Uh, yeah, imagine turning that into yarn. Algae is a, a, a food and a substance um, that is, uh, has a lot of value and a lot of uses. Here's the 25-point question in green things. The crispiness of vegetables. You know when you take a stalk of celery and it snaps? It's crispy. The crispiness of vegetables comes from something called turgor pressure, which is water pushing against these that surround plant cells. Plant wall? 
plant walls. You got it, 25 <laughs> points, excellent. Yeah, animal cells in us, they don't have the walls, but plant cells do. Gives them their rigidity. They, that's their skeleton. Nice going. All right, let's go to the zoo. Zoo parade for five points. I know you know your animals. Here we go. The Chinese have a saying that there is no kind of clothing that the larvae of these lepidopterous insects won't eat. What insects uh, eat clothing? Um, I think, I think it, it might, might be a mantis. You have to talk a little louder, honey. I can't hear you. I think, I think it, it might be a, a praying mantis. mantis. A praying mantis? No, uh, maybe you've heard of moth balls. These are these smelly things you put in your closet because moths eat clothing. That's why you've got to package them in cedar chests or put these uh, moth balls in there to keep them from being eaten. Okay, let's try the 15 point question. There was a movie called The Life of Pi, P-I. There's a little boy in a boat, looked a little bit like Drake, in the boat with him was a tiger, a hyena, an orangutan, and one of these striped equines. What animal is a striped equine that was in the boat with the boy? Okay, okay so, so equine. Well, well, I don't know if, um, if uh, I mean, not, but striped, striped is like, is like oh, uh, I'm going to go with zebra. You guys zebra. Zebra is right. Drake, he parsed that really nice. He took it apart. An equine is a horse-like animal, and you put stripes on a horse, you got a zebra. Good. Got yourself 15 points. Multiple choice for zoo parade. 25-pointer. Here you go. Multiple choice is also a visual question. Let me show you this insect. It's called a weevil. W-E-E-V-I-L, strange looking creature. Well, that hard outer shell that it has, like all insects have, weevils need the help of certain bacteria known as endo, E-N-D-O, symbionts. What are endosymbionts to help them make those shells? Are they organisms that live on the weevil's exoskeleton? Do they live inside the insect's gut? or in the environment in which they live. Here's this bug with a hard shell, but there are bacteria in, in his, in bacteria called endosymbionts that help to make that shell. Do they live on the exoskeleton inside the insect's gut or in the environment in which they live? Three choices. Come on, Anderson, I haven't heard anything from you. Pick one. I would to say, say Number one. One. Number one, that live on the weevil's exoskeleton. Drake, what do you think? I, I think exoskeleton. All right. Uh, Amanda, you're the captain. What do you want to say? I, I think, think that, that is on uh, exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. We associate that with insects, but the key there was endo, E-N-D-O. Endo means inside, like endoderm. Uh, so it's bacteria that live inside the gut of that little weevil. Let's go to the body. Three more questions before you take your break. Body systems for five points. Some of you have seen Pixar movies. Those are great animated movies. There's a new one. One of Pixar's new animated movies is about this imagined body part that is often paired with the heart. Your soul? Your soul? Your soul, that's right. There's an animated movie called Soul. S-O-L, yeah. nicely done. The heart and the soul. Yeah, I knew you knew that answer. Let's go for 15 more points in the body. Because our two eyes point straight ahead and give us information from two different sources blended together, we have what is known as this B initial kind of vision a word familiar to what bird watchers use. Binocular vision. Binocular vision, yes ma'am. You are on a roll, nice. 
25 point question in body systems before we take our first break. One of COVID-19's many effects on the human body is olfactory disruption, O-L, F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, olfactory disruption, which means a person can no longer do what? They, they can no longer breathe properly. Can't breathe properly, not breathe properly. Olfactory refers to smell. One of the signs that you may have COVID-19 is you can't taste and you can't smell anymore. Smell and taste, one of the uh, symptoms of COVID-19, but you did a nice job there. Your first round gets you to 115 points. Alan Wood, nice play, and it is now time to meet the team from Judge Sylvania Woods Elementary School. And let's say hello, first of all, to our captain, Robert. Robert, could you wave to everybody at home, please? Thank you, Robert. Kalaja is here, too, another sixth grader. Hey, Kalaja, wave to everybody. They're making a fashion statement today, too. They've all got those matching Sylvania Wood shirts on. Yeah, Robert is a model up there. And Christopher Cruz. Hey, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. All right. Great team. Uh, lots of support at the school. And if you guys are ready, let's begin. Here we go. We've got three questions for you in green things. Here's the five-point question. It's a nursery rhyme. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your what grow with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row? What green thing are we talking about that Mary Mary is growing? A rose. You guys, you guys have any, um, any, any um, opinions? Maybe you've never heard this. It's Mary Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? with silver bells and cockle shells. Try the 15 point question in green things. When someone smokes a cigarette or vapes using an e-cigarette, this addictive chemical produced by the tobacco plant is inhaled. Nicotine. Nicotine. It is nicotine, excellent. Yes, you got yourself 15 points. Let's keep it going. This is Green Things for 25. You know, sometimes if you eat a salad, it's just regular lettuce. Sometimes it's fancy. There might be a green in there called arugula. Some people call it rocket. That plant produces flowers that have sepals that have a tendency to fall off. What D initialed word describes that same habit of leaves falling off trees in the fall? Maybe some of you have heard most of the trees around here since they shed their leaves. They're known as deciduous trees. Deciduous means to fall off. Like your baby teeth. They're called deciduous teeth because they fall out. Let's go to the zoo for five points. Well, the name hippopotamus means river horse. This massive tusked mammal's name, a mammal that lives in the ocean, means horse whale. Yeah, the key word there was tusked, and the answer was a whale. You know, a whale has those big tusks hanging down. They call it a horse whale, a massive tusked mammal that lives in the ocean. Try this zoo parade question for 15 points. To protect its native birds, like the kiwi, the country of New Zealand hopes to wipe out, by the year 2050, each and every one of these P initial type animals, like weasels, that were brought in to wipe out the excess rabbits, but instead turned around and killed all the birds. What do we call an animal that kills and eats another animal? Begins with the letter P. It's a group of animals. Predators. Predators. That's it. Predators. 25 points is a visual question. Let's look at this picture for your 25 point question in the zoo category. 
In the new Lion King movie, the one with computer-generated animals, there was a rhinoceros beetle and this shrew named for what other pachyderm? Correct answer, there was an elephant. That was an elephant shrew. Uh, pachyderm means thick skin, so a rhino is a pachyderm, and so too is an elephant. An elephant is a pachyderm. All right, let's do the body system questions for five points. If someone is very beautiful, it's often said that he or she can take this away, compli complicating respiration. They take your one away. Their breath. Your breath. They take your breath away. That's it. Thanks, Chris. For 15 points on body systems, a well-known professional golfer advertises on television for a product that has helped his psoriatic arthritis, a disease that primarily affects what body parts? Your joints. Your joints is right. Good. Okay. Two for two in body. Let's get all three. Here's body systems for 25. Type 1 diabetes, which occurs when your body can no longer produce insulin, was once thought to occur mostly in children, and thus was given what J initialed adjective that refers to children, and was once followed by the word delinquent. J initialed. J initialed. Can you please the question? Yes, type 1 diabetes, which occurs when your body can no longer produce insulin, was once thought to occur mostly in children, was thus given this J initialed adjective that refers to children. At one time, this J initialed word was followed when kids were bad by the word delinquent. Correct answer is juvenile. Juvenile delinquent and juvenile diabetes. But well, that means you end the opening round here with 100 points. All right, Judge Woods. All right, it's now time to talk to our first team a little bit about themselves and their school. And let's go to our captain, Amanda. Amanda, tell people at home a little bit about yourself. Why did you want to do this today? I've, I've always found an interest in science. I always thought it was cool. So, so when I had the voice to do this, I, I decided I, I didn't want to do it. Well, we're very glad you did because you're playing an excellent game. You know an awful lot about science. Amanda, have you thought about your future? What do you think you might want to do someday? In future, future I, I, want I want to get my degree in business, in business or, or marketing. marketing. And become a businessman or one, one day start, start a business, business that's, that's eco friendly. Wow. Uh, you seem like a very disciplined young lady, and uh, I think you're going to be successful. I can see you as an entrepreneur. Good luck to you in the second half here. Let's talk to your teammates here. Let's go to Drake. Drake, you out there, young man? Hello. Hello. How are you? Tell me Hello. how you've been. Thank you very much. Tell us how you've been uh, spending your time during this long pandemic. I've been schoolwork done, and when I have to do my schoolwork, my classwork is done. Just take a little break. Yeah, we certainly need a break from some of this because sitting in front of a laptop for eight hours a day, I don't know anybody who can do that successfully. You, you know, our attention spans are kind of short. Uh, what do you want to do someday? Um, when we finally get back to school, when you first go back to school for the first time, what do you think you're going to do on that first day? Uh, it's going to be a lot easier here to, to do, do work. work. And, and I'm, I'm going, going to, to participate, participate even more. more. Yeah, it's, it'll be good to get back among our classmates and uh, Get back in just to normal life. You know, we're social animals and we need that. All right, you're playing a nice game, young man. Let's talk to your other uh, teammate here. Uh, where is, and there's Anderson. Anderson, Hello. how are you? Good, good. Good. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about how you guys prepared to do this today. We've, We've been, been studying. 
Oh, oh, so, so first, the first, first one time, time in the, 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 the teacher asked us to raise their hands, hands if we were giving the science meeting, and, and we and we did it, and and then, and then they would science, science book room about the and, and we would practice, practice a bunch of old, old science, science books more and more and more and more, and, more. and just, just study and, and practice, and then and we, and we got a NASA to us. Well, yeah, you obviously prepared because uh, you're developing a rhythm here. And you know, if this is your first time doing it, and it is your first time, it's kind of a little uh, intimidating. you know. And by the time you get it down, you feel comfortable, the game's almost over. But you guys are playing real well. What do you want to do someday, young man? I want, I want to make, make a, a I, mean, I, I, I got inspired by, by LG and LG Sonic and Nintendo Lazy. All, all those, those good, good companies, companies which are helping in innovating and changing the world. world. I, I want to and I, and I want to help people communicate with others and great Wow, helping other people, that's the most noble thing. That's the best thing any of us human beings can do. Okay, Alan Wood, it is now time for your last nine questions. Uh, the first three are from Let's Get Physical, so if you're ready, here we go. In the electronics industry, another name for a microprocessor is a CPU which stands for central processing what? What does the U stand for? Unit. Unit, Unit. is right, good, for five points. Next, for 15 points, a multiple choice question. Constellation Vulpes, V-U-L-P-E-S. You know, constellations are groups of stars that look like animals up in the sky, you know, if you use your imagination. Constellation Vulpes, V-U-L-P-E-S is so named because the cluster of stars resembles a rhinoceros, a camel, or a fox. A, fo a fox? A fox is correct <laughs> because vulpine, V-U-L-P-I-N-E, is an adjective that describes fox-like behavior. Excellent. And here's the last question in Let's Get Physical for 25 points. The study of sound, always a concern of engineers who are designing music halls and sports arenas, is this A initialed science. The science of the study of sound begins with the letter A. Correct answer there is acoustics. Acoustics. Let's go to potpourri. Five points. Silicon Valley is the place in California where all of the big computer companies are. You've got uh, Microsoft out there and so many others. Silicon Valley got its name because the first computer chips were made of this beach component that is made of silicon. What is a beach made of? Sand. 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 That's right. Sand is mostly silicon. So we'll never run out. <laughs> There's more than enough sand. Here's the 15-point question of potpourri. If you burn wood in the absence of oxygen, you get this material that's used by millions of people around the world for cooking, including those of us who barbecue outside. Coal. 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 Not coal. It's almost, you almost got it. It's charcoal. Charcoal is the right answer. Charcoal briquettes, I'm sure you've seen those. Here's the 25 point question in potpourri. It's thought that our fingerprints, now used for dexterity, meaning we can pick things up, and for identification purposes, those fingerprints may have given our arboreal ancestors, A-R-B-O-R-E-A-L, our arboreal ancestors, a better grip when they did what? When, when they swore when in water. Not when they when, when they climbed. Go ahead, Anderson. What were you saying? When, when they, they climbed, climbed or moved things around. You were close. It was a key word there, arboreal. Arboreal refers to trees. So if you're up in a tree and you're swinging like Tarzan, it gives you a grip. You can hold on to branches and you can hold on to vines. Let's go to Dateline for five points. 
Let's see if you know your superheroes for five points. Perhaps we need the green superhero of the same name to fight off a recent invasion of what insect nicknamed the murder variety? Murder hornets. The green what? Lantern. Lantern. The, the Hulk. Hulk. But these are good tries. Not the Hulk, not the Lantern. The Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. Have you heard of the Green Hornet? Ever? There's a now hornet out called the Murder Hornet. This big, huge hornet that they find in Washington State. It goes in and it kills every bee in a beehive. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible, it's a mass murdering bug. Hornet, Murder Hornet. For 15 points. Whether she gets the Moderna, the Pfizer, or the AstraZeneca version, Beyonce would perhaps encourage more people to roll up their sleeves to do what? To get, to get colder? To get what? To, to, to get colder and, and, or like, or like in, in the heat. I need a, a key word here. Why would she be rolling up her sleeve, especially nowadays? What are people getting? What would she be a role model for? A tan? Getting vaccinated. Getting vaccinated. All right, let's try this last one. It's a uh, visual picture. Well, he invented a system for helping the deaf this famed American is best known for his invention of the telephone. Do you know that man? We all have smartphones and cell phones. It all started back with that man who invented the original telephone. One time you needed an operator, then there was a dial. His name is Alexander Graham Bell. Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. So you end the game. With 140 points, Alan Wood, congratulations. We'll bring you back in just a few moments. It is now time to talk to the team from Judge Sylvania Woods, our sixth graders out there. Let's start with our Captain Robert. And Robert, first of all, I have to ask you about your, your backdrop there. I love it. What is that? It's, it's um, a, a garden, garden in China. China. It looks really good. It looks really good. Thank you for doing that for us here. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you guys prepared for this show. I'm going to watch all the videos, and we also watch the graphic show. That's the word. That's the word. Yeah. Well, you know an awful lot about science. Uh, can I take it that it's one of your favorite subjects? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to be a scientist someday, or what are you thinking about? I'm going to think about being IT science. Wow, that would be just terrific. I know you'd be good at it because you're doing a nice job here today. Keep it up. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's talk to uh, Kalaja. Kalaja, come on up and say hello to the audience out there. Why did you want to do this? Why did you want to be on the show? Nice and loud. Um, I'm really sure. I want to do this because I feel like I'm going to do it. Well, you're doing a nice job. I see you have a microphone there. Um, where you're breaking up a little bit, but uh, hopefully uh, in the second half here, if you have an idea, say it so we can, we want to make sure that you are contributing. So we, if you're saying something, I know you have been, and uh, just make it a little clearer so we know what you're saying there. What do you want to be someday? What do you want to do? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Ah, I've heard that from a couple people today, future business folks. Thank you very much. So let's talk to Christopher Cruz. Christopher, nice to have you on the show today. Uh, what's that behind you? It looks like uh, a scene from the universe. Yeah, yeah I, I got it from my birthday. It's a little background. I'm just in the background. I think it's great. It's just perfect for this show. Would you like, yeah. to, go into, would you like to go into space yourself? Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough question. Because if you go to Mars, you know, it could be a one-way trip. You know, going to the moon, not yeah. so much so, but uh, yeah, it uh, takes a lot of courage, um, sense of adventure. Um, 
Yeah, some people um, just can't wait to get up there. Other people, they'd rather keep their feet right here on the ground. What are you thinking about in the future? Anything in particular? Oh, thank you, Chef. Yeah. Hey, we all got to eat. And, you know, if you're a good chef, you'll always have work. Nice to have you here, Chris. All right, let's get back to the game here. Judge Woods, here are your last nine questions. We're going to start, first of all, with the questions from Let's Get Physical for five points. I know you've done this in class. I hope you've done this in class. If you dip a litmus paper into a bowl of vinegar, it will turn or stay what same color? White. White. White, white. Robert says white. Actually, it's red. It's red. There are two kinds of litmus papers, blue ones and red ones. The red ones stay red if you dip it in an acid, which vinegar is, and the blue ones turn red if you dip them in an acid. Let's look at the 15-point question. It's a visual. Let's look at this picture. If you ever have a chance to travel, I hope you go to Arizona because there's a place called the Petrified Forest. I thought it was a whole big forest, but of course these trees are ancient, they've fallen down, and they're petrified. The crystals that you see here in this petrified wood in Arizona's Petrified Forest are mainly of this Q-initialed variety. What kind of Q-initialed crystals are they? Quartz. Quartz. That's it. Good Quartz. answer. Yeah, 15. 25-point question. To desalinate ocean water, take the salt out of the ocean water, scientists use an expensive method known as reverse what? An O. Oh, Say it again. Never, never mind. Let me finish it for you. An expensive method of desalination is known as reverse what? An O initialed word that describes the movement of substances from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Starts with an O. <laughs> It's, uh, you probably heard of it, it's called osmosis, <laughs> osmosis. Sometimes people think, you know, you can sleep with a textbook and by osmosis you're going to get smart. That, that doesn't happen that way. Reverse osmosis, that was the answer there. Let's go to potpourri, multiple choice. People don't have to get vaccinated against shingles, the disease shingles, if they've never had this childhood disease that is caused by the same virus that causes shingles? Is it measles, chicken pox, or mumps? I All right, all, of, all of you guess this time, and then we'll let Robert decide. Okay, Kalaja, what is it? Chicken pox, mumps, or measles that has the same virus that when you get older can cause shingles? Say something. Okay. Chris, how about you? I think it's going to be You think it's what? No, no, measles. Measles. And Robert, what do you think it is? Measles. Measles. Actually, it is chicken pox. Chicken pox is the right answer there. Let's try the potpourri for 15 points. Again, it's a multiple choice. Maybe you know people like this. Some people can't eat dairy products, but they can't eat hard cheese. Because the harder the cheese, the less of this milk sugar that is present. Is milk sugar known as lactose, sucrose, or maltose? Lactose. Lactose is right. Oh, good. You knew that one. Perfect. Let's try the 25-point question in potpourri. The word cataract, C-A-T-A-R-A-C-T, -A 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 can mean a waterfall or the clouding over of this part of your eye. It turns kind of milky white. Some dogs get them too. People get them. The clouding over of this part of the eye called a cataract. What's the part of the eye called? Elijah, Elijah Christopher. Christopher. I'm, I'm thinking of like the eyelid. Robert? I'm thinking about the eyelids. Robert is thinking iris. He's, he knows his eye parts, but the part of the eye, just like in a camera, it's the part of the eye that actually focuses the image. It's called the lens. The lens is the part that clouds over. Let's go to Dateline. 
for five points. In the beginning, all of us human beings had brown eyes. But about 6,000 years ago, one of these changes happened in a gene giving people blue eyes for the first time. A default. A default. Say it again. Default. Default. Uh, what's another name for that? What is the name for a default in a gene? Chris, what do you want to say, Chris? No. A lot of, we've, we've heard a lot about this, about the coronavirus. It's been mutating. When it changes, it mutates, and it becomes a different form. There's a UK mutant, there's a South African, a Brazilian. So we're worried now that the vaccines we're getting may not protect us against these new variants that have mutations in them. All right, let's try 15 points. Here's a quote. The surface is very powdery. That was the second sentence said by this famous astronaut as he set foot on the moon in July 1969. Same astronaut who said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Who was he? Uh, Say it again. Armstrong. Armstrong is right. Yes, indeed, for 15 points. Last question for you in the game. Whether it was due to a tumor on his brain's cerebellum or damage to his auditory nerve, what famous composer sadly lost his hearing? Beethoven. Beethoven is right. Yes, indeed, 25 points. That's the way to do it. Good ending to the game which means you end the game with 170 points. Nicely done. All right, Judge Woods. Thank you for joining us today on this Zoomed edition of Science Bowl. Hope you were able to answer some of these tough questions. They were tough questions, but we had top competitors. We are proud of each and every one of them. Our final tally today is Sylvania Woods, 170. Allenwood 140, so Sylvania Woods, congratulations. We will see you in the next round. Congratulations too to Allenwood. Very good competition today. That's right, everybody clap for yourselves and for everybody else. And uh, while we're clapping, we're gonna change, we're gonna move our hands. We're gonna wave goodbye to everybody. I'm Dave Zarin, thanks for joining us today. We will see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye.